Today we have a very simple and short node. It's called a Spring node. Uh, what Spring node does is it basically uses the previous animation or the same animation and it adds a spring effect to it. So whatever animation you have going on, it'll add a little bit extra to it. So let me show you how you can achieve that. So let's maybe take a cube. I'm going to show you an example how uh, you can get the spring node. Then we'll try to create something out of it. So here I have this simple cube. And let's go to mash. Let's create our mash. And uh, let's go to distribute. Let's have maybe like 725. And uh, let's try to distribute this and uh, make it 24. Right. And I'll also take our offset node and we'll position it to maybe like a negative 5. And if you want, let's have a grid as a reference. Uh, let's maybe take 10. Right. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my locator because I'm going to be using a delay mode to create a very simple animation. So that will help us try to get some kind of animating look. So I'm going to just scale this up, right? Or you can keep it as it is. So here we have our locator, which is our basically our controller. And in our match, I'm going to go to delay and I'm going to attach my locator in here. So there you go. Instantly, you'll notice that our entire mesh moves with it so we'll go to our channel box select your locator and we're going to animate this so what i'm going to do is let's maybe look, uh, zero this out so let's keyframe all of this to maybe like on or zero and we'll go to somewhere around let's go to maybe like uh, 16 and we'll set a keyframe in here and in about 30, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my locator upwards to maybe like 5. And also, let's maybe change the direction of this to maybe like 180. So we'll have something like this. Alright, so if you play this, we'll have something that looks like this. Alright, and I'm going to make this 90 just so we have a little bit of time to have a small pause in between. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm, uh, I want to add a little bit extra to this animation. What I can do the uh, what I can do is to go to mash and in our mash section you will see this spring. I'm going to click on spring. Let's add our spring node and I'm going to turn this off just so we can analyze how our animation is looking overall. And if I play this, uh, notice what happens at the end. You'll notice that we get this linear stopping phase and that's it especially in here watch carefully so that's it uh no spring animation or no little bounce or whatever it just stops flat out so once i start uh, adding my spring here you notice how it overall looks and now you have that little jiggle at the end so just a little bit extra. So let's talk about the spring node. Uh, what you can do is instead of having it effect on all three uh, parameters like position, scale, rotation, you can choose what it should affect and not. If you're using something like a scale or rotation, you don't want to affect your rotation with your spring, you can turn this off and so on. And then you have the overall strength, how much uh, spring you want at the end of your animation. And then you have the maximum translation, you can increase or decrease the animation of this, which is basically uh, the amount of how much speed it's going to carry out. And then you have the damping, which pretty much dampens the spring effect. The higher value will cause spring to settle a little faster. So you can go for a higher value and then the animation will settle quicker. And if you have a lower value, you'll notice that you'll get more of that springy effect. Yeah, there you go. And then a stiffness, obviously, it'll add a stiffness to your... I'm going to keep this damping value to have 0 0.50, just so you have a little bit more baby motion. And then you have the stiffness, which will basically determine the rigidity of the spring effect. And if you have a lower value, it will impact less on this. All right. And if you have more rigid, then obviously it's going to be a little stiff. So I can increase this and then you'll notice that again, you'll have the same flat out 
uh, look overall. So I'm gonna keep this thing to again. We'll keep it to 200, or we can keep it to 150 if you just want a little bit more bounciness. And then you have the damping variation, which will add a random variation of uh, the damping value on a per object basis. So we can have this. So we have and then again if you want some objects some pieces to have that carry out that stiffness you can add a little bit of that stiffness and you'll have some kind of variation on some of them and that way you'll have you'll notice that you get some of this like a piano pattern some of them are carrying that stiffness with it uh, where most of them are carrying that same bounciness with them Right, so even though you have 0.15 value, what you are getting is a randomized value which which is basically going from 0 to 150 and you can have a like 0 0.10 value, 0 0.20 value, 125 value and so on. And that's it. Or uh, let's say you want to have uh, this effect affecting only the center part. What you can do is you can create a follow again in the middle part somewhere right here and you can have the same thing. Uh, for the entire animation, just only affecting the center part. And that's it. Alright, and let's see if you want to create uh, something better with this. What we can do is let's get rid of all of this. And uh, let's maybe let's take a text. We can type in like alright, let's type in this. Can reduce the font maybe like six. Let's go to geometry. Let's have only uh, let's have maybe like eight. Extrusion division distance. Let's reduce this or maybe let's have font size thing like eight. But I think the font is looking quite good. I don't want to change the font, but uh, let's see if we can find something better. Uh, Uh, let's keep it to this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take uh, let's say a cube or let's take a cube i want to swing this down let's go to mash create a mash and what i want to uh, mash this onto my text so i'm going to choose mesh here and i'm going to drag and drop my mesh right about here and we can obviously uh, increase the amount of clones we have in like 500 and I believe we are getting more curve resolution on our G. So we are getting so many clones there. So I'm going to reduce this to maybe like one so we get evenly out. So now from here, what we can do is we can turn off our text just so we can see how many clones we are getting. And we are getting somewhere about here. We can keep it to 1000. I'm going to reduce my cube. And there you go. Alright, so what I want to do here is I'm going to go here. And uh, we can take our delay node, and with that delay node, we can take a locator. And uh, before adding the animation, I'm gonna reduce this to maybe like 500. Perfect. So let me just go to repro, use GPU, perfect. And now I'm gonna choose my delay node, and I'm gonna drop this in here. And with my locator, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back. Let's animate this to half key selected and I'm going to go to maybe like 90 and let's go to 90, select a locator and we can key select this, we go to first, I'm going to move this up, let's maybe say 14 and let's again key select this and I want to rotate this. So let's maybe take 180 again. Let's animate this. So we'll get this animation. Okay. Perfect. And with this, I want to add a little bit more in here. So let's say I add maybe like a 19 here. And I'm going to have keys like this. And let's add a negative 180 on the z axis. And there you go. So we get something like this. Okay, and what we can also do is we can have a higher scale here, just a little bit higher. 
And on the first thing, we can set it to maybe like 1.5 and we can scale all of them. So they will shrink as they come down. And there you go. So let's have like maybe 100. Just so we'll have a space of 10 frames to see. And there you go. And obviously, we don't want to see our uh, text first, we don't want to see our shapes first. So, what we can also do is we can take our offset node and we can again uh, create a negative scale to let's say a negative one. And when you apply this, you'll notice that we get the regular scale of this. And what we can also do is with this, create a fall off. And instead of a fall off, let's maybe take a cube, uh, change the inner zone to maybe like 0.5, and we can just scale this to be like this. Alright, and let's invert the fall off. And there you go. Alright, so we can have a lower value with our offset to maybe like maybe this 2. Maybe 1.5 negative 1.5. All right, this looks good. I think I might have changed uh, the scale value of this. Okay, this works perfect. Now, maybe like one, I think I should keep it to one. Or maybe I'll take another offset to just completely zero this out. Alright, uh, so from here what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my mesh and add a spring node. And again I'm going to lower the damping to 0.1. I'm going to add some variation to my damping. And there you go. Let's take 120. Alright. Uh, I'll have some variation for the stiffness and I'll reduce the stiffness as well. There you go. So I like this animation. I want to apply the same thing maybe to a animation where it is more like uh, like a motion design or something. So I want to take this maybe like say we take a sphere and we just create maybe like a spherical of out of it and or let's say we create this grid and we just zero out everything all right we can have like maybe a six 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 and we'll have a small value and with our random what we can do is we can have 10 10 10 so we get something like this all right and what we can do is again we can go in here and we can set key for all these parameters and we can copy the scene from here to here and actually let's just do a simple paste and we can zero this out There you go. So we'll have this animation. And let's uh, shorten this whole animation. Let's cut this and paste it around here. And let's apply spring to this. All right. Let's see how it rolls out. Okay, perfect. Now we'll add some randomization to this. And there you go. You can also take, if you uh, go for a more of a spherical look, you can either uh, clip it on top of a mesh or something like this. If you want to have like, let's say, you can take a simple sphere and then you can go to mesh, distribute, Drop in here 
and then you can simply hide your sphere. Alright. So there you go. Anyway, so it's a pretty straightforward uh, effect, it's a pretty straightforward node, it's a very simplified thing. All you do is you already have some animation and it'll add a little bit extra to your uh, entire motion design. So that's it, yeah. So have fun with it, play around with it and enjoy. I'll see you in the next video.